Welcome, friends of the Greasy Shop Rag, to another edition of Over the Bench. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna 460 chainsaw. The customer complaint was that something was jacked up with the clutch drum or something. He didn't know. Uh, it was binding up when he tried to run the saw. And the chain wouldn't turn. So, looking at this here... Um, Obviously, the clutch bearing is out. We're going to take a closer look and find out why. Or if it's just the bearing, if there's something else going on. Crap! So now, right away, I can already hear the keyboards clattering uh, with people telling me that if I use that impact on the clutch like that, that I'm going to shear the flywheel key. Now, I'm not saying that can't happen, uh, but in my experience, it hasn't happened. I don't have a lot of flywheel key repairs to begin with, so I really don't think that I'm damaging any flywheel keys by doing that. But having said that, if it takes more than a couple of little ugga duggas on there to try and break that loose, then I just go with this method here. And we're using a rope as a piston stop. I like using a rope. It just seems more forgiving on the parts. So to do this, one thing you have to remember is you have to bring the piston up above the exhaust port when you do this. And it has to be coming up, not going down. You don't want your rope getting caught in your exhaust port or your transfer port. Uh, that's just going to be problems. So you get the rope on top of the piston with the piston above the exhaust port. And you turn the, uh, the breaker bar like I, I did here. I'll break it loose. That's it. If you want to tighten it using that same method, you have to remove the rope turn the crankshaft the other direction so bring so the piston comes all the way down and then when it comes back up again then you can put your rope back in there because you're going the other direction so the first time the pistons coming up you're above the exhaust port you put the rope in you crank on the clutch it compresses the rope between the piston and the dome now if you were just to try to tighten the clutch on there it's going this way now the rope could drop into the exhaust port and then when it comes back up it could cut it off uh, how's that for a detailed explanation so let me get you caught up here that worm gear was cracked the aftermarket clutch drum that was on here the uh, the hub that holds the rim drive in place was all busted into little pieces. Rim drive wasn't in too bad a shape. Uh, and the the bearing, you know, really wasn't the problem. The problem was that the the hub and the clutch drum was broken. So I've been talking a lot, not paying attention, but I think I had that tin plate off of there already. And if you look at the bottom right corner of that tin plate, it's it's beat up. The chain's been rubbing on there, and there's actually an opening. And that plate should have been replaced. Um, I didn't have one. The guy wanted the saw back right away. So yeah, off it goes like this. Uh, what's going to happen is All debris right. is going to get pushed thing? into that. On behind the plate, you saw how much crap I cleaned out of there. Uh, that's going to happen again. So we got a 460. We went and got our uh, new worm gear. Everything's greased up, so we can just slide that in place. We got our new 
clutch bearing, clutch drum bearing, whatever you want to call it. Wonderful. Now, this is not uncommon, believe it or not, to open up one of these packages and find a damaged bearing. Uh, normally, it's not that an individual roller has fallen out. It's usually that the damn cage is crushed. Well, there's nothing wrong with the cage on this one. The bearings just popped out of there. I don't know why I did this off camera, but I grabbed a smooth faced pliers and just snapped that roller back into the cage. And it fit on the crankshaft fine, so I know that the cage wasn't distorted. I'm not worried about it. We'll grease things up, move forward with the repair. So now you see we're using a factory spur drive drum as opposed to the aftermarket rim drive that the customer had on there. Uh, we don't offer a rim drive option for a 460, so um, this is what he gets. And to be honest with you, his aftermarket crap broke, so I guess that experiment failed, eh? We're going to clean this clutch up just a little bit before uh, we spin it back on there. Now I was watching this video in the editing process here and I thought, gee, I hope I remember to tighten that clutch. So when I'm tightening it, I'm not going to use the piston stop rope method. Putting a spark plug in here and just hitting it with the impact, one ugga dugga, is all I ever plan on doing. Yes, you can tighten it up to 25 newton meters like the factory recommends. I don't know how many newton meters one ugga dugga is. I don't think that's 25, but I haven't had them come off. Uh, and the only way they can really come off of there is if you run it like this without the clutch cover on there. I mean, when you're in the wood, that clutch is naturally tightening up. When you shut the saw off, or when you are free revving it without a bar and chain, that torque from letting off the gas and the motor uh, coming back on compression could loosen up that clutch or when you shut the chainsaw off a lot of times on that last revolution the uh, the, the thing will rock left and right and that could kick it loose but if you've got bar chain and clutch cover on there even if it did come loose it's going to tighten right back up the next time you drop it in the wood I'll show a little video here real quick of uh, what I mean when you uh, shut it off and the and the crankshaft rocks a little bit, which by the way is the same reason you see guys on older saws holding the rope out before they hit the kill switch just to keep that kickback from damaging any of the starter parts. So, the customer wanted this hardware replaced for this top cover. I guess he's got another cover, but the hardware was all jacked up and he wanted the right hardware to work. Because he must have a cover and not the screws or something. So, I got to come up with some clip nuts and some screws. Some of these are worn out. The nice thing about these clip nuts is that... Uh, if they're worn out, you just pop it off of there and pop another one in place. There isn't any stripped plastic to worry about. There isn't any stripped threads and metal to worry about. Mm -hmm. There's no tapping or any of that it's monkey business. Close. Just pop the old clip nut out and slide a new one in place. You can see I found a donor saw for some of these parts. You know these these simple little clips and and uh, 
and things like that. We don't stock a lot. Maybe just you know one example of each thing. Someone you know sometimes people got to have new parts, but or sometimes for warranty claims you got to have new parts. But for the the average guy, he'd rather pay half price for a used part that will work exactly the same as a new one. So we keep a mess of saws laying around. I mean, I don't know if it's uh, cost effective or not because, you know, space is at a premium in the shop. So that's all I got for you in the Husqvarna 460 clutch swap. Thanks for watching. Later.